So yes, it looks like Capcom is very interested in adding additional content to Dragon's Dogma 2, either in the form of an expansion or DLC. We're going to talk about the news. Plus, there are lingering problems with this game that we're going to tackle in this video. We're going to talk about that as well. And one particular augmentation that you should definitely not ignore. It has a hidden use that you probably did not realize. And yes, the game desperately needs this one big feature that everyone is talking about. We're going to dive into that. And of course, yes, we're going to go over your top comments. Plus, check this out right here. So guys, if you're worried about viruses getting onto your PC or phone like I am, or you just need to do a spring cleaning of your files to free up some space, I found the perfect all-in-one antivirus software for the job, Combo Cleaner. And Combo Cleaner is giving you guys a huge 80% discount today, which I'll tell you about here in just a second. And I also want to give them a big thank you for sponsoring this video. So Combo Cleaner is one of the best antivirus programs out there. It will protect your PC, Mac, iPhone, or Android device from major threats like viruses, vulnerabilities, spyware, adware, dangerous websites, and yes, all combo cleaner plans come with a fully featured premium app as well. And you can also clean up disk space by deleting unwanted apps, cleaning temporary files, or clearing duplicate photos and more. Combo Cleaner's interface is also super easy to use. Just one click of a button and it will run a full antivirus scan on your device. It also includes premium customer support by cybersecurity experts who will help you with any issues or questions you may have. So what are you waiting for? Join me and get the best antivirus software out there. Click on the link in the description below and use my promo code and you'll get an 80% discount for Mac or PC versions. And again, a huge thank you to Combo Cleaner for sponsoring this video. All right, so I say we dive straight into the Dragon's Dogma 2 news. First and foremost, if you did miss it, there was a brand new title update. Go get it. It definitely does have some improvements in it. I'm going to briefly talk about this and then we'll move on because I know a lot of you guys already know about this. Dragon's Dogma 2 title update is out for PlayStation and Steam. Still pending for Xbox Series S and X. But yes, for PlayStation 5 and Steam, it says added the options to start a new game when save data already exists. This should have already been something, you know, with this game, of course. And we also need multiple save files. That would be nice. Now, this is cool. It says change the number of art metamorphosis items available at the pawn guilds in the game to 99. Also making the quest that allows players to acquire their own dwelling where they can save and rest available earlier in the game. Miscellaneous tax display issues and bug fixes, blah, blah, blah. And then for PlayStation 5 specifically, it says they added the option to switch motion blur on and off in options. I prefer to keep it on. Let me know how you guys prefer. And then this is most notable here, adding the option to switch ray tracing on and off in the options. So I've been hearing that this actually does boost frame rates. Let me know if that's the case. If you are on PlayStation 5 or not, I have yet to test it. I've been playing primarily on PC. And then also, yes, check it out added the option to set frame rate at max 30 frames per second in options, which apparently makes it more stable instead of having that variable frame rate. So yeah, you do have that option at the very least. Now for Steam, we have improved the quality when DLSS super resolution is enabled. So that's good. And then fix an issue related to display of models under some specific settings. But unfortunately, no performance optimization uh, updates right there. We need some news about that. That's the big one for PC that I want to hear about is further optimizing, you know, when you're in cities, when you're around a large amount of crowds and NPCs, because Capcom has gone on record saying that that is one of the core issues why machines are bogged down with this game. All right. So yes, we've got to talk about future content for Dragon's Dogma 2. So check this out right here. Here's the headline. It says this, Capcom surveys Dragon's Dogma 2 players on potential DLC, and they go on to ask players what they would like to see and expansions. And ultimately, the big question is how much would you be willing to fork over for DLC for a big expansion? So sound off in the comments below what your like price point would be for something like that. Now, I always think of Elden Ring, what they're doing with their big expansion. I believe its price point is around $40, which has stirred kind of a controversy somewhat, but I think everyone knows that it's most likely going to be very quality. They've only produced like really 
high quality stuff with Elden Ring. That's what I want for Dragon's Dogma 2. I want something that's beefy, that's not tied to like a battle pass or microtransactions or any of that nonsense, of course. I really love these beefy expansions that give you hours and hours of endless content. And I think Dragon's Dogma 2 definitely deserves that as well as a new vocation. But also, you're probably wondering, hey, Robbie, how realistic is it that we would receive like an expansion to the map, a new area to explore, harder enemies, you know, even like a harder difficulty mode. So we can look at the history of the Dragon's Dogma franchise, and there's good indication that, yes, we would be seeing something like this for Dragon's Dogma 2, because you got to remember, Dragon's Dogma 1 underperformed, and they still support that game with DLC and a type of like an expansion to the map with harder enemies. So yeah, I expect them to do that with Dragon's Dogma 2 simply because this game is actually going beyond their expectations in terms of how many people are on it, how many people have purchased the game. So yeah, it, to me, I think Capcom would want to support this game. And I really cross my fingers that they do because I personally really, really do love this game. But with that being said, this game is not perfect. And before Capcom dares to move on to DLCs and expansions, I really do think that there's some core issues that they should tackle. So I say, let's talk about it because the community has been talking about it. And first and foremost is enemy variety. And of course, the map just being absolutely oversaturated with way too many enemies. So check this out. Here is this post right here. It says, I quantified the difference in enemy count and variety between Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen and Dragon's Dogma 2, so you don't have to. Now, this one comes from Commissioner Odo, who goes on to say the following, and there's a counter post to this, by the way, because apparently some of this to a lot of people is subjective. So let's dive into it. It says a lot of people talk about enemy counts, but there's always qualifiers like whether it's just a slightly changed version and therefore part of the same category, Golem versus Metal Golem count as two enemies, but one category, etc. So here's the breakdown, apparently. So let's get into it. It says, there are 92 enemies in Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. If you subtract simple animals, categorically though, there are 31 enemy types, those 92 fit in, if you subtract non-repeatable one time set piece enemies. But the big question is, what about Dragon's Dogma 2? So here's what he had to say. It says, there are 57 enemies in Dragon's Dogma 2 if you subtract simple animals categorically. There are 18 enemy types. Those 57 fit into. If you subtract non-repeatable one time set piece enemies. Now, that does sound like enemy variety for Dragon's Dogma 2 is significantly less than Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen. But there is a significant counter argument here. Check it out. It says, I actually quantified the difference in enemy count and variety between Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen and Dragon's Dogma 2, so you don't have to. And it says, first of all, they said Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen had more enemies than Dragon's Dogma 2, and this is true on paper. However, this completely ignores a lot of intricacies like enemy clones, which Dragon's Dogma 1 had a lot of it, and the fact that many enemies in Dragon's Dogma 1 were very limited in, in quantity and mostly fought once and never again. Now, this is kind of a long-winded post. I'm not going to be reading it all verbatim. I just wanted to say the gist of it is this. Obviously, enemy variety is a concern in Dragon's Dogma 2, and I do believe this is something that they need to address throughout the entire world instead of just through an expansion, just throwing in an area that has new enemy types. I really hope that they consider fine-tuning this because I think that this does need improvement for sure. And I have had the chance to play both Dragon's Dogma 1 and Dragon's Dogma 2. And I have to say the AI is definitely something that isn't really talked much about, except in this follow-up post here. It's just such an improvement in terms of Yes, you do have goblins and then they're separated into subcategories. The AI is very different between the groups, which I personally really do appreciate and I do notice. With that being said, we need more enemy variety. And also, I think we need a little bit of breathing room between enemy encampments, between you know enemy groupings. Uh, there needs to be more of a sense of exploration between those instances. Let me know if you do agree. Some people actually really do enjoy the consistent, constant action. 
But I'm seeing a lot of complaints, especially when you head into Battelle here, that enemies just are every five feet and it's just ridiculous considering that, yeah, fast travel is limited. And I think a lot of people just want to enjoy the beauty of the world and exploring and finding cool treasures. And I, you know, I think they could have considered maybe breaking up some things with some creative puzzles that are actually fun. That could have been an idea, but then again, some people hate puzzles. So I don't know. Let me know how you think they could have broken up the open world a little bit better. But yeah, then there's features that feel like they're kind of missing from the game that are in a lot of open world RPGs. And this is one of them that a lot of people are wanting in the game. Check it out. Transmog would improve fashion in this game tremendously and Warfarer proves it. it. Says, I get that this game is designed purposely with friction in mind for a sense of progression and adventure and that each vocation has a role. The different armors you can wear are a reflection of those roles. But when you see just how expansive the clothing and armor options are that you can have when you unlock the Warfarer, it really changes the game. I think the transmog should be a style tab in the equipment menu and contain the styles for any gear you've previously found for both you and your pawn. Armor itself should still be restricted by class type. The styles should not. The amount of variety this would offer, not just for players, but for hireable pawns would be insane. I do think the vision for how the game works sometimes gets in the way of player expression, and this is one of those ways. Transmog should also apply for weapons. What if I want to wear low-level gear to increase the difficulty, but want it to look like in-game gear? What if I want to wear in-game gear to feel powerful, but want to look grounded and gritty? I really hope this is something that devs take into consideration with a future update. And a lot of people do want this for sure. Just let me know, do you think transmog should be something that's unlocked midway through the game or just be available outright at a certain, you know, gold price? I'm kind of curious your take on this one. It's like, I do get where Capcom is coming from with keeping unique gear, but at the same time, it's like, sometimes I'm like, I don't want to change that gear. I can see that the armor rating is higher. I can see that everything's better, but this just looks to me better, like visually, I want to keep this. So I 100% get the need for transmog. I think there needs to be a way to add this into the game for sure. All right, so yeah, got to talk about this one. This, I, I'm not surprised by this post, by the way, whatsoever. It says Trickster is kind of awful. And this one comes from Frog Popstar. And I say I'm not surprised because Trickster is one of the more divisive vocations in the game. I didn't expect everyone to be like, oh, Trickster. Cannot wait to play Trickster. Because they're more of like a pacifist in a way, I guess you would call it. They're very, very different uh, play styles. So, yes. But a lot of people are discussing how the trickster, it just seems like the actual gameplay mechanics are underwhelming here. Because the clone disappears if you get hit, this makes it impossible to get the vocation going in the extremely common, I turn the corner and 10 goblins are on me scenario among other common situations. Number two, the pawn buff is strong, but it consumes HP would make sense, except trickster has no way to heal. The true support vocation has no heal and badly needs to bring a mage because of this nice meme. <laughs> Number three, most bosses are battled in areas with no cliff, so many of the tricks are worthless. See, I remember when they revealed this class, I kind of scratched my head and I realized, yeah, yeah, you know, you're not gonna find every scenario where you can trick the boss to fall off the cliff or what have you. So I found that kind of like mm, a little bit gimmicky in that regard. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like um, this vocation is something that isn't my particular favorite to each their own by the way but yeah it seems like a lot of people agree here on this considering the upvotes here now it goes on to say this the handful of story bosses are basically immune to trickster because those bosses fight on rails essentially and their attacks are wide range so uh who their target is doesn't really matter not to mention in the rare case you get a boss to go off a cliff it often doesn't hurt them and causes the whole fight to become a mess often your pawns Chase after it and dying in the process. I lost a story NBC because of this as well, which causes issues for his quest even after reviving it. Number four, maybe you track a small enemy into jumping off a cliff, but any other vocation can just hit that same small enemy once or twice and be dead. Number five, causing enemies to jump off cliffs or into water often causes pawns to chase after them, often resulting in their death as well, given that the vocation relies on pawns, this causes some issues. So you could see there's core 
core gameplay issues facing that vocation. And I really do think they're going to have to fine tune this vocation. Or I don't know, like, I think they're going to have to update it. Yeah, I don't want to say consider it loss, you know, because I still think people would be interested in it. But it's definitely one of the vocations when I actually unlocked it. I was like, hmm. <laughs> that's just me, by the way. Some other players might be like, oh, man, why, why are you dissing my trickster? I love the trickster. I don't know. For me, I'm more like guerrilla warfare, hands-on approach, get in there, get into the action. It's just not my play style, but to each their own. I keep saying it again. I hope you guys don't think I'm hating on the trickster too much if you love them. But uh, anyway, yeah, we also need to talk about how, yeah, everyone is requesting that this game gets a hard mode. It definitely is surprising that the game doesn't have a hard mode considering all the Elden Rings out there and Souls games. I do kind of appreciate that this game, by the way, is more approachable. I do love that. I feel like it has a broader audience because of that. But at the same time, I really do think they need to offer up more of a challenge for sure. And yes, a tip about one of the augmentations in the game that I think a lot of you guys would really want to know about gratification. So check it out. This one comes from Scrawny Grandpa, who says, so most folks, don't even use this AUG, and I'm sure. But since I run Duo, only myself plus my pawn, while leveling certain vocations, I had no access to outside of item use healing and ended up using the AUG gratification. All right. So this is a small tip about this thing. It heals off not only from enemy kills, but also off of destroying Saurian eggs, wooden barrels, wooden crates, etc. Pretty much anything you can destroy will heal you. Just sharing the knowledge so the more you know. Yeah, check it out, try it out. Let me know how you guys like it or if it's something that you've been ignoring or not. But I'm sure that many of you will make use of it now. All right, so you know what time it is. It's time to go over your top comments. Remember to leave a comment down below. It could end up right here in a future video. So let's check out and see what you guys had to say from my most recent Dragon's Dogma 2 video. So we have this one right here. I hope they bring the Eternal Fairy Stone back and there was a reply from the dev team about this. They kind of just joked and said, <laughs> we'll see. It seemed like they weren't like very interested in doing it because they have an idea about this game. I think we have some comments here about horses as well. So let's keep going because I know a lot of you guys actually do want to see horses because they can also add like a stamina bar to the horses. You know, horses could get tired. Then you have to set up camp and take care of your horses as well. I think that's one really good workaround for the traversal issues. Now, here's another good workaround. Mini Faza 31 or Faza 3157 says, easy fix for traversal. Don't deplete stamina until you enter combat. And I know there's a PC mod for this as well, but this is one of my highly requested features that I want to see, and I wish it was already in the game. It's such a pain to keep running that oh, you have to stop. And then you run, stop, you know, it's just such a pain. Uh, but yeah, I really do wish that they added this where you go into battle with a full stamina bar. Now also we have the quest where I got my own dwelling was pretty early. I can't imagine it happening any sooner. It's weird that they added that in the title update. Now also it says, I would like to see a no stamina loss until you enter combat. So yes, more people want to see this as well. Then King Slime says, Capcom has just launched an online customer survey. That's what we're talking about today was the survey about an expansion. So yeah, uh, he's encouraging everyone to go take that survey. Let me know if you guys got the survey or not. And then Cat Cat says, I really hate how they got rid of an equipment for the arms and foot and just turned it into two sets. And Suna's reason is pretty flawed considering that so far I've seen a lot of pawns wearing the same sets. As cool as the armors are, the customization in this game is a downgrade and I hope it gets changed and I hope they update the pawn rating system and photo mode. I miss the star ratings and message comments. So yeah, seems like they've kind of subdued a lot of those features. And you guys want them to bring it up back to how it used to be. That's like one of the most upvoted comments right there. That Yeah, it used to be like layers, you know. And I personally love that where you have your armor underneath and then you, then you really get to customize. You know what I mean? throughout the clothing layers. And I think that's such a cool way to kind of like approach armor. But anyway, there it is, the latest happenings around Dragon's Dogma 2. Thank you all so much for the comments. I love reading all of them. Yeah, we got one uh, 
comment here about horses. Let me highlight it actually. Let me let me pop that up because it's interesting. It says horses would be miserable to use in Dragon's Dogma 2. There is not enough space to make use of them while you would just get stuck on crap 24-7, not to mention the enemies. Okay, so there's some people that don't want to actually see horses. All right. And it would kind of be a different flow to the game for sure. I don't know. It's definitely something that the community is discussing. Will it happen? My personal opinion is I just don't see that ever happening. It seems like from the comments from the dev team, they're not interested in that whatsoever. They have this game designed around being on foot. And it would also change the way the game streams and it could be rougher on your machine streaming stuff faster. So that's also a whole other concern. But anyway, yeah, thank you all so much for the comments. Stay tuned here for more Dragon's Dogma 2 news. I have you guys covered. And like I've said before, some really cool stuff coming up here in 2024 for open world games. So look out for that right here. But thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time. Take care.